as you know, um, cancer is a very frequent cause of death these days. Um, unfortunately, many people are diagnosed in late stage and uh, they will die of their disease. And I always felt that there was a big need for help to these patients, both physical and emotional. And, and I was very interested in that. Oh, that's terrible. So you have a dream of like helping, helping those people. Helping people. And uh, I grew up in a family where my father was a physician too. And uh, so I always saw that that was something I wanted to do. But as I say, uh, the incidence of cancer is growing. And uh, there is a big need for physicians. Afatinib was studied in Lapsang trials and uh, the trials Lapsang 3 and 6 compared Afatinib to chemotherapy. Uh, one was cisplatin and and the other one was cisplatin and cytobine because in Asia uh, at that time pemetrexate was not available yet. So, uh, it was important to see not only the efficacy of abatinib versus platinum tablet, which is the first line treatment for metastatic non small cell lung cancer, but also what is the quality of life of these patients. Because many patients don't care about gaining months or even a year of life if they are going to be suffering and be dependent on their loved ones. So, um, Quality of life is important, and it was very well uh, collected. The data were very well collected in Lapsang 3 and Lapsang 6. Um, it was the EORTC quality of life questionnaire, uh, which looks at different, different aspects of quality of life. The uh, QLQ, LC13, and C30. Um, and, uh, Afatinib has also advantage to other EGFR TKIs or epidermal growth factor receptor tyrosine kinase inhibitors because the dose can be reduced when you treat with gefitinib, you have 250 milligrams. But when you treat with afatinib, you can go from 40 milligrams to 30 milligrams to 20 milligrams. And as you reduce the dose, we have shown that the side effects decrease dramatically. And the question was, if we reduce the dose and then reduce the toxicity significantly and improve the quality of life, are we losing on efficacy as progression-free survival, which was one of the primary endpoints. So uh, we have shown that if we reduce uh, afatinib from 40 milligrams, for example, to 30 milligrams because of grade three toxicity, the plasma level actually is the same as for patients who were on 40 milligrams without toxicity. And the efficacy, progression-free survival did not suffer at all. So this was the whole point. Improved quality of life, decreased the symptoms, the, the serious adverse events, and still maintain the advantage of better efficacy than on chemotherapy. Futile care is defined as treatment without clinical benefit. And it depends on perception of patient, treating physician, and there is also society perception. And there are different goals for treatment and is the goal going to be futile? For example, patients, especially when we talk about metastatic uh, non-small cell lung cancer, they care about quality of life mm -hmm. and delaying or worsening of symptoms, uh, as, such as cough, dyspnea, pain, fatigue. Now, if, if the progression-free survival is longer, then the worsening of symptoms is delayed. So the patients care about the symptoms quality of life. They know they cannot be cured. 
the medical doctor, the oncologist, cares about survival. But we have to balance the treatment toler tolerability and, uh, let's say, the survival. So, the futility from patient's perspective is that if he doesn't achieve what he would like, then it's a futile treatment. But for a patient to decide, yes, I want this treatment, he has to be well informed. There has to be consensus between the patient and the treating physician. And in order to reach the right decision, is it going to be futile or not, is it going to be worthwhile for the patient and for the physician, the information has to be right. There cannot be misalignment. So the patient has to be informed what kind of treatments are available for him in the first line or if we talk about second line, whatever, okay? And um, he has to be informed about the toxicities and what is important to prevent them. And the physician, he cares about performance status of the patient to decide Yes, it's worthwhile, but we have to remember, and this is what I'm going to stress in my presentation, that performance status two and three is sometimes reversible. There might be sudden airway obstruction, or brain tumor, uh, or bony metastasis, which is painful. And if we take care of it by, for example, a radiotherapy, we reverse the poor performance status and patients still can have a treatment which will not be futile. On the other hand, there are irreversible poor performance status situations, such as severe COPD, cerebrovascular accident, congestive heart failure. They are not going to improve, and the treatment would be futile. So doctor's perception depends a lot on performance status, uh, judging the futility, and also what is uh, estimated survival of the patient. Mm. And if it is just in a week, three to six weeks, to give expensive treatment and give toxicities, the physician thinks it is futile. Mm. And there has to be an understanding, and not only understanding between patient and the physician, but also the caregivers at home of the patient, mm. their emotional needs, and all that. And I'm going to go into more detail about how important it is that everybody is explained how important the compliance is with the treatment, so the treatment is not futile. Because if you don't comply with the treatment and the mismanagement of the toxicities, the drug will be, re the dose will be reduced or drug discontinued, and that will lead to futility. So compliance, emotional needs, sometimes even caregivers have financial needs to support the whole situation and avoid the futility. So I'm going to talk about the two. I think that the young physicians who like to be challenged, uh, they are attracted to oncology field. It's um, uh, intellectually quite challenging because we have so much of new development now. Uh, the new biomarkers, we understand the biology of the cancer so much better, so much more than we did uh, uh, 20, 30 years ago when I already practiced. So it's becoming more interesting more intellectual, mm. it makes more sense how we treat, we have new targeted agents, we have immunotherapy, and, and the selection of the patients is uh, more reasonable, we don't just mix different chemotherapy agents as we used to. So I think that the future is very interesting and challenging, mm. and I think that that is what the young uh, uh, oncologists mm. uh, like. 